What's good, Box World? This is your host of On the Ropes. Today, my special guest, fighting out, the city, fighting out of the city of blood and love, currently 6 and 0, 6 KOs. Got the old school mentality of boxing. Now, fear Charles. What's good, big dog? Man, I can't get the volume. Hold on. You hear me? Yeah, now I can. Good, good, good. Right, good. How y'all doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? All right, man. Let's jump right into it, man. You started with boxing at the age of ten years old uh, uh, with your cousin, man. Talk, talk about that and, and his importance uh, during that time when you uh, first started boxing at ten years old. Um. I really didn't see it as uh, overall big picture. I thought it was just one of them, the big sports that you know people get into every now and then. And uh, I didn't really see the professional route at that age. I kind of was just messing around with it. Um, we started out in a, a weightlifting gym, and uh, me and my father we knew nothing. We just we just was boxing. We we boxed every now and then, but every. For the most part, it was just lifting weights and um and just moving around. And uh, they had a boxing gym in there, and they threw some gloves my way, and I, I took it. And we just rock with it, and uh you know we we got into contact with some other guys from that actually was in the recreational center that actually worked with a, a good gym where a lot of a lot of good pros came out of, and they was like, yeah, you come down whenever. So that was when I was around like ten, and uh ever since then it's just been love with the sport, man. You know, I was going to ask you about that, but you just said it just now. That's when the really the love for the sport really developed during that time? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I had saw an article talking about that, and you had mentioned your cousin about that. What was so significant about your cousin and you being involved with the uh, boxing during that time? Um, he was really he was really just an important role model to me. Um, to this day, I don't even think he knows that, but... um. Yeah, he he was we was we was always together. We ever we always did everything together. So when it, whenever he started boxing, it was really it was really mine too. It was like really my drive to really get into it too, so we could spar together. We do all that kind of stuff. Um, he was a bit older than me, but like I said, other than him and my father, it was those were the people I was really looking up to. So yeah, he, he really really put me onto that, you know. What's his, what's his thoughts on what he see from you now being a six and no six KOs as a professional? I'm quite sure he's pretty proud of what you're doing right now. I don't really we don't really communicate like that. He's um he he gets into a load he gets into different stuff now, so we don't really talk about it that much. But whenever we do get in contact, he definitely does show me he's very proud of me. Now I, I wanted to get the story on this man with the name of uh, Nafia Charles, man. Yo, uh, can you tell the story about? Uh, it was a story with your mother explaining why she named you Nafia Charles. Can you explain that to my audience? Yeah, she she told me that when I was born, she didn't want me to have any fears. She only wanted me to fear God, so she named me Nafia. Yeah. That's, to, that's, this day, that's, to this day, everybody thinks that Charles is my first name, though. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Do a lot of people think Charles is your first first name? I literally can't. I when I whenever I, I go to LA Fitness, probably twice a day, once in the morning, one in the like one at night, and I have to I have to clock in with my name Charles. I can't clock in when I fear they won't know who they who are talking to. Oh wow! I you know going back to to uh, your amateur days, you had seventy five uh, amateur fights, five uh, time. Um, five-time Golden Gloves champion. At what point in time did you say, hey, I want to be a professional boxer? Because you said early on that really wasn't what you were looking for during that time. When did it actually hit you that, hey, I really want to be a professional fighter? Probably um, around like 15, probably 15, 16. This was like, I think I won the gloves probably twice at that time. Um it, the amateur, the amateur game is really, it's really just, it's, it's not as good as it used to be. Um, it's a lot of under underground stuff that happened when it's not in national tournaments that I really just wasn't associated with too well. 
But um, whenever we went out to nationals, though, it was great energy. We met a lot of great people, um, people that we meet to this day. I mean, I was, I think we went to Mexico. We went to Mexico a few weeks ago. We met out with once one guy that we we met in like 2013, and the title tournament or something like that. So it, it gives you a lot of good context when you get out there with the amateurs and stuff like that. But um, me me being professional and all that, when I was I think my last my last amateur fight was in the Olympic qualifiers, and I placed third I think, and I placed third at like 54. And we, I was talking to my dad about it, and we it, we had to change the game plan up because it was getting to a point where I wasn't training as hard as I know I can. I fight I fight 35. So imagine somebody that, that's fighting 54, and when I weigh in, I can't get past 45. Wow. So, you know, and I was still, <laughs> I was still winning most of, my, most of my matches, you know, so. Because was, one of the... I, I know I noticed um, with the interviews I had heard recently that that you really like to stay close to your fighting weight because yeah. you never know when you're going to get that call to be ready. I, I heard you talking about that the importance of always yeah. being ready. Yeah, we uh we got this fight uh, April third. We had this fight two weeks ago. They gave me this information two weeks ago, so. I told them if they wanted it tomorrow, we could do it tomorrow, you know. So they they came up with April third. Um me and my um my boxing teammate, uh Kid Austin, we're gonna fight on that card. We're gonna show out, we're gonna show up, you know. So I, I, I hope that all your fans come down to watch. It's gonna be a amazing fight. I mean people don't know it till they see it, man. But once you once you see it, you're gonna believe. So, you know. You know, I, I wanted to talk about one of the things that 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 really uh, close to your heart is uh, helping with the kids. I want you to speak on the love that you have for you know helping kids in the community and what's some of the things that you're doing to impact the lives of the youth that you're working with. Yeah, you you literally just saw me. I was just talking to my old teacher. Uh, he he was talking about it. He um he was overweight. Um, he came down to my gym one day off a whim, like it was just a random connection, and uh, he's been following me ever since. We, I, I, we, I didn't probably shave the hundred some pounds off that guy now. So it, it really means a lot to me to really get into the mind of the people around me, just to let them know what it takes to really get what you want out of life. You know, I think a lot of people don't take that for granted. Um, what it means to actually. And saying get fulfill your dreams and fulfill what you feel like you can accomplish you know a lot of people they don't they don't speak on that kind of stuff and uh i'll let all the kids know that come in you know if you need any information you need any motivation experience anything I'm, I'm definitely here to help some dude just came in for the first time today he's like 20 i think he's like 22. i had a full in-depth conversation with him telling him everything because he seen me spar we did i think we did like 11 or 12 rounds today and uh it was great work i worked with like three or four dudes great work and i'm wearing down before the fight and he's seeing me he's like dude why don't you why don't you take the dude out when you saw him why don't you take those dudes out when you saw they was hurt and i tell him we work in the gym it's all constructive we all we, we work to get better we don't work to take out our teammates we don't work to do all that extra stuff and the highlight reels and shit like that and videos of course it looks great it gets you followers and all that kind of stuff but we don't we don't do that when we come to the gym when i work on my when i work with my guys we want none but the best work and we work with each other to gain experience and gain you know more rounds so when i talk to these guys when i talk to the newer people that come into the gym i just let them know like if you don't if you put your all into it there's there's no limit that that you can't that you can't reach would you say you have, uh, like I was speaking of earlier, that old school mentality? What What are your thoughts on the on the young fighters today and the whole social media and posting, you know, their sparring and things of that nature? Because I think your father actually runs your social media, right? You don't even That's, be involved with it. I don't. I don't. I don't do social media too well. Um, I have a little private page to connect with like family and stuff like that whenever they want to interact with me, but um, I. 
the, the, the posting and all that stuff is not really for me. I, I prefer to keep my information to myself. But, um, you know, in this game, you kind of have to, um, you know, show show people what you're worth and what you're about nowadays. So I make sure every now and then that my dad records a lot of stuff that we do. That's a lot of crazy-ass workouts that we haven't put online yet that I know if we put up, we'll go viral, you know. So it's soon to come. We just, you know what I'm saying, we're waiting on the perfect time to really release all this information and stuff like that. But right now, it's everything's going perfect, man. I mean... We got, I think, 10K on my page right now. Um, it, all, only thing I can hope for is, you know, is to aspire for more. Uh, next fight, next fight, I don't, I forgot the guy's name, but we taking him out. Um, we fight again May 8th. Make sure y'all come see it, man. I think it's going to be televised. Uh, I'll make sure, I definitely make sure I get the information to you so you can, uh, you can let all your people know where it's going to be at. And um, definitely, man, I'm just... I just want everybody to see what I what I can to what I came to show, you know. You know, I, I wanted to speak on the on the one thirty five division and, and what you see right now at the one thirty five with the so called uh four horsemen. Have you had a chance to spar any of, of the with the so called four horsemen? Uh the, no. none of them. We, we sparred I sparred a lot of people that have sparred them, but um no, nah, we were supposed to spar them Haney a few times, but he he always asks me when I'm about to, either when I'm about to fight or when I'm, I'm out, you know? So he, it's just been bad timing for that pretty much, pretty much, but we, we love to work with him. I mean, it's never, never any duck. We, we prefer, and honestly, we work with all of them. I definitely love to work with all of them. You know, with you being at the 135 and the things that you see at the 135 division, um, what's the timeline for you to put yourself in that position to get a title shot at one of those uh, at one of those belts at the 135? So right now, we what we're working on right now as a professional is keeping keeping the experience at uh, at an increase. So what I mean by that is when I work with when I go in there and I fight, I take the dudes out in the first round. And I'm not really gaining the professional experience that I would, I would like to get, you know, by the time we get up to those big fights and I want to be in there. I want to have at least, you know, 15 to 30 rounds experience as a professional fighter. And right now, I think I only have eight, I think. Yeah, because your last fight was second round knockout within 30 seconds of the second round. Yeah. You then take every it fight after that was the first round. So we just... We're working on, you know, getting a little bit more experience in there, try to work to do, not taking him out too fast. But a lot of times the knockout just come, so I ain't going not I ain't just not gonna take the advantage. So how how is hard is it how hard is it for you to get opponents? I'm quite sure you get a lot of uh turns. Oh my goodness, man. We didn't I didn't been through probably probably a hundred some fighters. We didn't, we didn't been through probably 100 some offers. It's crazy, man. I mean, we we've offered a lot of undefeated guys to um to fight. Uh, just be like, no, um, they won't even give it a light opportunity. Um, some dudes that we work with, it, they'll they'll be on the lower side, but it's all we can take. You know, I shit, I fought 50. I thought I fought one dude 51 because he was the only nigga that, to take a fight. He was the only dude to take a fight. I had to fight 54, not 50, 51. How frustrating is that uh, for you with the politics of boxing and the things that you're saying right now? I mean, I feel like it's a lot better time. It's a lot, it's a lot easier time to get known, you know? <laughs> I feel like, you know, back in the day, it was a little bit harder because, you know, you didn't have the internet to really show show what your worth was. To everybody as you do now you know so um i mean it's 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 a, a necessary evil sometimes you know you know philly philly boxing is probably at its peak right now and uh it really it really means a lot for me to really be a part of it you know man how 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 great would it be man to to hear your name as the world champion and and having the city on on your back like that man i I'm working three. I'm working three times a day, man. Four a.m., twelve a.m., 
and eight eight o'clock every day just to make sure that I get I get somewhere near there. You know what I mean? And I, if somebody gonna beat me, they gonna have to work twenty four hours. That's what I tell that's what I tell myself every day. If you gonna beat me, the only way you gonna beat me is if you work out twenty four hours a day because ain't nobody won't work in me. You know, you seem to really have that same mentality as Boots because he talks the same thing, you know, really not a social media type of guy, just really mm-hmm. in there uh, every day grinding and hustling. And that's that's what you're doing also as well. And from what I hear, man, you you, you taking people out with, <laughs> with, them, uh, with, the, with them shots, man. You, you know, joke when it comes to the punching power. Breaking the body, man. The body, the body is my my go-to. You know, I, I wanted to talk about uh, the importance of having a great team around you. How did the relationship come about between uh, you and Rick Ross? So we, um, me and my extravagant conditioning coach was talking, and um, he got me into contact with uh, Rick Ross because he was in contact through somebody else. But he wanted to inform about me because I was, you know, I'm, I'm his top, I'm his top athlete at the moment. So. Um, we talked about it. I I really really didn't know who I was talking to at first. Then I they they kind of showed me, and um, it's been great since then, man. I mean, nothing but great energy, wisdom, and all kinds of information from that guy. I mean, he he's he's really like a guru when it comes to wisdom. Like he it just it's a lot of stuff you wouldn't think he knew, not only about boxing but just about about life in general. And he's He's well entwined with his life, you know. What's what's the biggest thing you would say you've taken away from being around uh, Rick and some of the advice he's probably uh, given uh, during that time? The business aspect, you know, keeping everything on the same pedestal as working to get a bigger bag, you know. Always allowing yourself, always allowing yourself to put put yourself in a position where no matter what, you're going you're gonna to be the top earner in the room, you know. Mm-hmm. We had those conversations all the time, and I, I really appreciate it, man. He, I don't think he knows how much I how, how much I take in, but that really means a lot to me when, when we talk about that kind of stuff. I, I want to talk about uh, uh, Ivan Robinson and the high praise he has for you, man. What's the relationship like with him? It's great. I mean, he um, we always. I mean, it's always something new that we learn in the gym. It's always something new, some new moves, some new styles. It's when you when you pick at the older guys uh mindsets when they box you, you pick at the, how they box and how they do certain stuff it's really an eye opener to so many more things you know like when i when i was in the amateurs a lot of the stuff i could see like if i would have did this or i did that and i knew this kind of stuff back when i back when i when i was boxing amateur i would have i would have definitely prevailed over so many different people and i'm so glad i have this information now because I, like I said, it it really gives me motivation to, to really knock out everybody that comes in front of me. You know, has there ever been a, a point in time, you know, dealing with the sport or just in life in general that 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 you didn't want to box anymore? We took I took a break when I was younger. Um, I was around like 14, 15. Um, I actually got smaller when I was when I wasn't boxing. I never thought that would happen. I got I got smaller when I wasn't boxing, so um, it it was really boring. I mean, I'm really good at school, but I I prefer not to do school. If you know what I mean, like I I, I can get I I think I passed my class with a three point five, and I didn't do anything for the first three quarters. Oh wow! Yeah, school was never hard for me. It's just I never felt like doing it. And I always knew what my intentions was with boxing, you know. So when I stopped boxing, it was like, you know, you really got to pick up a trade or pick up something that you feel like you want to enforce. And that's one thing that my pop, I, I thank my pop for a lot because he, he enforces that, that lifestyle into me where I know that I have a goal and he won't he won't let me slack on it, you know. Yeah. You know, one of the things, uh, a lot of boxers have that entrepreneurial mindset because, you know, have to h- keep income coming in. So a lot of the fighters uh, into the flipping of the houses. Uh, are there any businesses that you're involved with outside of boxing? 
uh, also as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, we working, we're working on starting a little war in, income. Um, I said income, in corp. But um, other than that, right now, it's really mainly boxing. Um, I can't really get into real estate right now. We ain't really dropped no big bags on that kind of stuff yet. Correct. But um, definitely a mind, def- definitely a push that we're going to get into. Um, Philadelphia hasn't legalized weed um, yet, but once it does, I'm definitely going to push it. Um, there's definitely going to be an aspect that I, that I, I move a little bit efficiently. Um, man, I got so many different ideas, man. And like I said, I got to thank Rick Ross for a lot of them because, you know, he, he pushes the, the business aspect to me the most. And uh, I really can appreciate that from, you know, it, it's really a lot of stuff that goes into the, the, uh, the mental aspect of being an entrepreneur that people don't really know about. They think they could just go into it without this kind of information and they'll crumble when when the opportunity comes they don't know what to do when when certain shit happens so like i said I, I gotta thank him a lot for it you know he definitely helped me out a lot you know to, to, I, I always wondered about this and, and i'm gonna get your thoughts on it in order to become a, a world champion do you feel you have to be a part of one of the major promotional companies because of the way the politics of boxing is do you, yeah. do you feel it's going to come to a point that you have to sign with like uh, the top rank or Mayweather or the Stone or, or one yeah. of those? Yeah, I feel like they own it right now. They own the the uh, boxing commission, the uh, the the world the world championship commission, all that kind of shit. I feel like they own it. The, they uh they depict on who wins what fights and who who gets to go where. Like I said, it's a necessary evil because you know. It can get you far, and it can also put you down. So, has those? Sense, but I'm sorry. Uh, has those conversations ever came up yet with any of the promotional companies wanting to bring your board? We've talked to a lot. Um, we've had, we've got a few deals, but we haven't really taken anything yet. They haven't really they haven't really showed us what we what we what we know what I'm worth. So, until that opportunity comes, I mean, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. I'm going to keep collecting these belts, keep knocking these niggas out, and uh, hopefully they fighters don't get in my way. Is there, is there any one fighter? No, nah, that's not a good question because you you want anybody that got a belt. But yeah, does, is, it, any, is there one fighter, man, that you really just, I would love to get in the ring with, man, to show who I am? Tia Fimo. You would say he's the he's the big dog at the 135. He's the crown right now. He's the crown right now. If, if I if I was to show my if I was to show my skill set against anybody, I'd love to do it with him. You know. Do you he's see? A, the- he's a phenomenal boxer. Also, let me just put that out there. He's definitely not something that you can just get past. So, um, definitely something I would train a, a hard as fuck for. But at the end of the day, the only the only intention I have with the sport is to show what I'm worth. You know, and uh, I can't do that fighting these wannabes or these nobodies. You know, speaking on 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 the situation with uh, Tio, do you see that fight possibly happening at the one forty? Because he's he doesn't he doesn't plan on staying at one thirty five long. Maybe a couple more fights and he's out. You see that probably in the future at the one forty. Yeah, shit, if he got the best at one forty, I definitely find him there. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You know, I, I'm really looking forward to um, just just. Prove, not only just proving to, to myself, but proving to the people around me and to not only to Philadelphia, but to the world what, you know, what Not Fair Charles is all about, you know. Hey, man. It, really mean, it really means everything to me. When you get into a camp again, man, I would love to come up there, man, and get photos and stuff, man. Just Definitely, man. Definitely. Hey, man, I, I'm looking forward to seeing big things from you, man. I, I, I've been hearing great things, man, and I, I truly appreciate you coming on. Shout out to CC. <laughs> Echo, the whole team, Rick yeah. Ross, man, great team that you have right there, man. Appreciate it, man. And man, I and I truly appreciate you coming on, giving your time today, man. And, and man, people gonna be avoiding you, dog. I, I'm gonna tell you now. It, it's kind of funny. Yeah. What, what's your thoughts on that? Why I got you, or what Belinga's doing? Because you were talking about the whole knockout in the first round. He, I think he's got the he, what 15 now. 15 first round knockouts yeah yeah um because he said the same thing that you said he want to get 
some rounds in to see where he is, and it's not yeah. happening. It, I don't know. It's like you. The thing is, when the opportunity presents itself, you're not going not take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have somebody on the ropes, and they eyes is twinkling, and they they you don't do they don't know where they at. You're not going to back off from them just to get the rounds in. You know what I mean? That'd be that'd be dumb. I know I get smacked. If I came back, if I came back to my corner and and I and I missed the opportunity like that, so um, I mean, it's it's gonna take it's gonna take a very special fighter to get, to get it out of you, but I feel like you know, it, you ain't gonna knock everybody on the first round, you know. So uh, the opportunity is gonna come, and I'm just preparing myself for it. Um, I'm saying we've been doing we've been doing four minute rounds and uh, four minute rounds and five minute rounds, so. Like I said, if somebody if somebody got one, somebody beats me, they I, they would have to train twenty four hours. Uh, now, Phil, are you are you a fan of the sport also as well? Of course. Yeah, you know that all of them are. That's why I had to ask you that because I was actually surprised about that too. Like a lot of them are not fan; they don't even watch boxing. So I asked you that: Is there a fight that, as a fan, a boxing fan, that you're looking forward to coming up, or you hope will happen? Um, I'm looking. I, I like these new these, these new fights that just got set up in my division. The um Garcia versus um, what's his name? I forgot what's his name. Uh, uh, Javier. Yeah, Javier Fortuna. Fortuna. Then you got yeah. Haney, Lenares. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, and Anderson Lipman. Yes, definitely a good fight. I mean, all these fights is coming up. Definitely watchable fights. Definitely good, good fights that I feel like the demand is high for. So. I'm going to be watching, you know. Hey, man, once again, I truly appreciate your time, man. And where can they follow you? On? Uh, since you don't run your social media, where can they follow the social media, though? My uh, my social media is not fair, Charles, N-A-F-E-A-R, Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S. Hey, man, I truly appreciate your time, man. And like I said, I, I would love the opportunity to come to the gym. when Because I've been to uh, Boots Gym. Uh, yeah. you know, with Bozy and them. This gym, you know. this gym is down the street from me. I literally could turn this corner and look at it. Oh, wow. Okay. So you so you go there too also as well? Yeah. Okay. We, we was down there last weekend. Okay. Yeah, because he getting ready for his also as well. So y'all iron yeah. shopping iron. All right, man. I truly appreciate it, man. And tell everybody your next fight day coming up. So my next fight is um is this week actually. I fight uh April third. And I fight again May 8th, I think. So April 3rd is in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not sure if it'll be televised, but I know the May 8th one will be televised. Um, definitely make sure you get the information so you can tell your friends, all your, all your fans, the fans about it. Get all the information out there. See as many, get as many people to see me as possible. I know it's going to be a great fight. Um, like I said, I don't want to come in with the intentions of being a Mike Tyson, but these dudes can't stand me. So it is what it is, you know. Hey man, keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I like your mentality, big dog, for real. Appreciate it, man. All right, there you have it. A future world champion at that 135, for real, man. Y'all better y'all better recognize not fear Charles in the house. Coming straight out of Philly, man. Appreciate your time, big dog. All right, there you have it. Not fear Charles on the ropes. Man, I truly appreciate everyone tuning in. And we're out.